Good Hello. morning. Welcome to our podcast this morning. Uh, just want to welcome you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe the Lord has given us a word in season to speak at tears at this time. So he's a more than welcome. Yeah. I would ask you on the outset of this, just to share it. We're bringing the good news to people. You know, people need this, especially in the times that we're living yeah. in. People need to hear a word from the Lord. So, Hallelujah. Uh, I just ask you to share it this morning with family and friends. This is an outreach to those who don't believe. And you know, if there was ever a time that people need God, it's the time that we're living in now. So I just want to encourage you today to do that and see what God does with his word. Amen. Hallelujah. And again, we just want to... Uh, say good morning and it's hard to believe it's the 10th of January already and mm -hmm. uh, the weeks are just flying in and um, but God is good and you know we serve a God who is awesome Hallelujah. who is mighty who is powerful mm. and whose arm is not shortened that he cannot save Amen. and we believe that God is just moving mm. um, in Ireland at this time in among the nations in this time in a powerful way uh, he's making himself known. Mm. He's demonstrating his power. He's saving people. He's bringing and drawing people onto himself. And we serve a God who acts on behalf of those Amen. who Hallelujah. wait for him you, and who Jesus. call out to him. So this morning, you know, we're just going to gather around the word and we're going to hear what the spirit of the Lord uh, wants to say to each mm. and every one of us. Because our God is alive mm. and he speaks and he leads and he guides us in his ways, in his good and perfect uh, truth. Uh, so God is good. Amen. So we just want to say hello to everybody. Uh, to Gina, to Maria, uh, to Colm and Jade, uh, to everybody who's listening in. Amen. And don't forget to like and to share because as we're always saying, and hey Stephanie, uh, as we're always saying, it's so important that the word gets out there. You know, God's word is powerful. Mm. And it has the power to save people and to give hope mm -hmm. uh, to those who are in uh, the pit of despair, to those who are on the verge of giving up. Our God saves. Our God saves. Mm -hmm. And that's the good message. That's the message of the gospel. Uh, so like and share and tell your friends to listen in because God has a word uh, to speak this Amen. morning. So Amen. let us just pray. <laughs> And uh, just see what God does with us this morning. Amen. Amen. So, Heavenly Father, we just come before you. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, I just lift up everyone that's looking at this this morning. Yes, Lord. I lift up everybody that's listening to this this morning. Father God, and I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would open up the, the minds to understand the words that you want to speak, Father yes, Lord. God. You are the most important person in this today, Lord God. And I pray, Father God, that people will come to a revelation yes, of your truth and your truth alone. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we just ask you through your Holy Spirit that you would deliver what you want to say into the hearts of everyone that listens today. Amen. And I ask this. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So I'm going to be on my other phone. Um, so any comments that you have uh, or any prayer requests or anything like that, <laughs> make sure to leave a comment or leave a message. Okay. So praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> glory, glory. My glory, glory. At this morning. Uh, so before we go into the message, I want to just share a few things that's just been on my heart um, this week. You know, the Lord Jesus always gives us a word uh, that's relevant for the times that we live in today. And uh, I had a preach and I felt the Lord change in the Jordan the week because circumstances, in a sense, dictates what God wants to speak to his people. And uh, so as I was getting this together over the last few days, the Lord's just been chopping and changing it. Uh, and I've been finding a real sort of struggle to get it all together. So as I, as it was before the Lord today, I just felt the Lord say, look, at, uh, speak from your heart. Speak as you know uh, how to at this moment in time, as you see events around the world, you know. And, and God just uses you as a vessel. But I want to talk to you this morning and I want to ask you, a question before we even go into the preach, you know, is there life? And, and this is really, it shook me to the core this morning. 
Is there life after death? Like what happens at the end of all of this? When, when I stop reading my last breath, what actually happens? Me and uh, as I was considering this, this week, you know, we're living in a time that is unprecedented. Nobody knows what is what tomorrow holds. You know, we had a savior a few weeks ago in, in a vaccine. And now they're saying there's a, a super strain that, uh, that, that will not have any effect on this new strain of the coronavirus. And then we've had the American elections and millions upon millions of people are putting the hope in Donald Trump. And, and, and that empire has sort of fallen in a sense. And uh, people are left sort of disorientated and, and not knowing yeah. what tomorrow holds, what laws this man Joe Biden is going to bring in. You know, and uh, as I look at this, I'm going to look at this from the point of this man. It's, it's God and this man having a conversation about eternal life and I've preached on this before and shared on it before it's a it's a story that I know well um but just this week as I've been looking over it it's it just uh, opened up so much more to me and the story as I said is is found in John 3 and it's a story between God Jesus God in flesh talking to Nicodemus and and Nicodemus was no ordinary man he was, a, he was a Pharisee. He knew the word of God. And, and, and that's a word to us. Yeah. You know, because there's many of us, even within the church, that couldn't actually answer that question. Like, where do we go from here? What happens when I, stay, when I stop reading in this world? And, and what is my future? Um, and is there an eternity? And, and is there even a God? You know, because we live in the temporal, in a sense, in this world. And, and even within the, the church confines, people are living in the temporal, thinking that they're going to live forever. And I've often said it, and I will say it again. You know, eternity and salvation, it's not really important until you're lying on your deathbed facing it. Yeah. And I believe that the Lord has given me a word to speak. And it's a word of truth. And in the world that we live in at the moment, the truth is very scarce. And I believe that the Lord Jesus is coming back for a spotless church. And the Lord wants us to be well grounded in his word and in his truth. That not, we've not to be messing around with it in a sense that we have to be, you know, making the world or the word of God sue how we are living and, and, and the dictates of our hearts dictate how we live and respond to the word of God. So if you want to go to your Bibles, I'm, I'm reading from uh, John 3 verse 1. And it, this is what it says. And it says, now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. It says he came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For nobody could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. And Jesus said to him, truly, truly, I say unto thee that nobody will see the kingdom of God. Unless they're born again. Unless they're born again. It says how can somebody be born when they are old? Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. And Jesus again answered Nicodemus and he says this. Truly, truly I say unto you. Nobody can enter. The kingdom of God, unless they're born again of the water and the spirit. It says flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. And Jesus is addressing this man, a religious leader who should have known 
in a sense, all of this stuff. He knew the word of God. He knew about the, the laws of God. He would have stand and, uh, set in a, in a seat of judgment in the Sanhedrin. So he would have known the laws of God inside out and upside down. But he would have known of the word of God. But actually not known the word of God. It says flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. And I just want to share on this for a little bit. You know, as a born again believer in Christ Jesus, when the Lord comes into your life, change happens. Yeah. It says we move to a different zombie. We don't walk in, in the pattern and the ways of this world. We, God comes into our hearts. And dwells within our hearts. It says when God met us. It says we were dead. Mm -hmm. And he says behold I, I make you new. I make you new. I make you into a new person. He says I make you into a new creature. He says I, 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 I transform your mind and your thinking. And you know to think about even being born again. It, it's a supernatural world. And I believe at this moment in time, you know, we, we live in a society within the church that is like everything is on the now. It's not necessarily about my relationship and my growth with God. You know, we live as if, as I said, we're going to live uh, forever in this world. But the Bible says that eternity is in every one of our hearts. And I don't know about you, I'm 52. And I know as I get that bit older, I start thinking more about my health. You know, as a as a young lad, I I done everything in my in my in my strength to ruin my body and and my mind. I lived recklessly. I I didn't live with eternity on my heart. I I lived in the moment and in the day. And sometimes, as Christians, we can believe and and live in that. But as Jesus is saying to, to Nicodemus, look, I don't want to I don't want to get involved in your religious attitudes or how you think or perceive things to be. I am telling you the truth. Unless you are born again of the Spirit of God, you will not enter the kingdom of God. You will not see the kingdom of God. To see the kingdom of God is to understand the kingdom of God. To know that the, the here and the now is just a training ground to what comes after. Every one of us are going to just live a miserable few years in this world. But we are going to spend eternity alive. Whether in heaven or in hell. And you know, depending on where you've come from in life. If you were born in Iran this morning, you are most likely a, a Muslim. Now at the moment in Iran, the Iranian church is one of the biggest church, grown churches in, in the world. And I think one of, the, one of the reasons that is happening is that it's complete dependence. It's complete dependence on God. You know, in, in the Western world, we have, we have God and A, B, C and D. And I'm not getting into politics this morning. I'm not going to talk even about religion. But no matter where you are born in the world this morning, this will dictate your belief systems concerning this. If you were born uh, uh, on the Falls Road in Belfast, you will have a different upbringing and you will believe differently. If you are born on the east side of Belfast, you, you will believe differently. If you've been in Sunday school, or whether you've been to the Catholic Church, whatever that may be, you will believe differently concerning eternity. But this is Jesus, as I said, talking to a religious leader. And he's blown all that stuff out of water. You know, being a Catholic can't say if you're being a Protestant, a Baptist, a Pentecostal, a Muslim, a Buddhist, a Hindu. None of that can save you. God speaking to this man is speaking to him about eternity. And he's saying to him quite clearly. And he's saying, look at Nicodemus. 
I want to tell you the truth in this. I don't want to mess around. I don't want to get into a conversation about reincarnation or coming back as a dog. I want to tell you the truth in this because I want you to be where I am going. I want you to be in eternity with me when you breathe your last breath on this earth. And this is so important, Nicodemus, that you listen to what I'm saying. He says, truly, truly, I want to say it to you not once, but I want to say it to you twice. Unless you are born of the spirit of the living God, you are not entering the kingdom of heaven. You know, this world has cheapened the cross of Jesus yeah. Christ. It will tell you that everybody gets in. But that is not the fact. The Bible says, Jesus, God says that the road is narrow. The road to heaven is narrow. And folks, we don't know what is coming. Every day there's increases. Every day there's new strains. We have a South African one. Last week we had an English one. Next week we'll probably have a Belgian one. Next week after that we'll have a Holland one. Whatever it is. The, the, this stuff is, is coming along. And as the weeks go by, as the news as the news goes out, people are just being wrapped in fear. And I believe the Lord gave me this message to tell you, just to cut away with the religious. And even watching this, you know, there's folks watching this this morning that have been watching for ages. We had a text earlier on that somebody has a noose around their neck hanging themselves on, on Facebook. And this is how real this stuff is. And Jesus doesn't want to mess around with your opinion now, even your belief systems. He says, look, at, unless you are born again of my spirit, you have no place with me in eternity. In the world that we live in at the moment, everything is trying to indoctrinate us with fear. I see the Pope put up something yesterday and says if you don't get the vaccine, he's saying it's suicidal denial. That is what he's saying. Everything around us, we have leaders shutting down churches as if they're not relevant for today. And the sad fact is, the church is not relevant. You and I as the church of Jesus Christ at this moment need to lift their voices and declare that Jesus Christ is the only way. Yes. The only truth and the only life. Amen. That unless you are born again of his spirit and this coronavirus takes you out, you are going to a lost eternity. The church was never meant to be a natural place of worship. The church was always meant to be a supernatural hospital where the broken, the battered and the bruised come in and they receive healing. Jesus in his great commission says, go and heal the sick. Go and raise the dead. Go and cast out demons. Does this sound like the Lord's command to us is to play happy clappy, seat warming Christians? Now God wants you and I to be radical in our belief, to know that no weapon that's formed against me will prosper. That when I am in his hand, no devil or demon can snatch me out. To know that Jesus Christ has set me free. And if I'm free, I am free indeed. Amen. It says in verse 8, the wind blows wherever it pleases. It says you hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is, it says. So it is with everybody 
that's born of God's Holy Spirit. You know, God changes lives. If you are bound, God sets you free. Amen. If you are troubled in mind, God gives you peace. But you need to be born again. Truly, truly, I say unto you, that unless a man be born again of the spirit of the living God, and you need to ask yourself this question, have I been going to church because of the music? The friendships? Have I been going to church because the, the pastor is so cool <laughs> in his skinny jeans and he's so radical in his speech? And I love to hear him speak. Or am I going to church because I want to worship the living God? I want to praise the name of Jesus with my brothers and my sisters. I, I, I want to let off an expression of worship out of the overflow of my heart because I've become born again. I want to be baptized into the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I want God so radically to change my life that the things of this world will seem as nothing. That I, with all honesty, can say, compared to him, I have nothing. Jesus is saying here that the church is not just another group. The Church of Jesus Christ is, is not just another organization. We, with the Spirit of the Living God, have the dynamis power, dynamite power, within each and every one of us to bring this message to the ends of the earth, to overthrow nations in the name of Jesus Christ, overthrow belief systems in the name of Jesus Christ. That's been radical. At the outset of this, there was 12 men that would not be silenced. And we are here today, 2,000 years later, standing free, heaven bound, because these men would not give up on their belief, on their faith. What a powerful, powerful Shall God be safe. Goes on to first hand and he says. What I want to get across to you today is this. Look at. You can look at all this stuff in the natural. But you still have to ask yourself this question. Do I believe in life after death? Is, is there an eternity? Is there a heaven to be gained or a hell to be shunned. And only you can ask yourself that question. I'm not here to convert anybody today. But I know God wants to change our life. So Nicodemus turns around and says, how can this be? And Jesus again just, just shuts him up. He says, Nicodemus, you're, you're a teacher. And you don't understand these things. You're a teacher and you don't understand these things. And again Jesus twice says this. Truly, truly I tell you. We speak of what we know. And we testify to what we have seen. But still, you won't accept this testimony. You know, some people view us as Christians, especially evangelists, as like door-to-door -door salesmen, trying to sell us something that we don't want, and that's irrelevant, and, and that is not true. Being a born again believer in Christ Jesus, we know, 
we are fully convinced, I'm fully convinced that if I was to drop dead on the spot today, my next breath will be in eternity with Jesus Christ. I'm complete, nothing in, nothing in this world would convince me of that. There, there has been kids that have been born again of the Spirit of God who have had all manner of evil done against them to renounce the name of Jesus Christ and would rather be martyred than denounce or renounce Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour. Quite mm -hmm. powerful that people would do that. That kids, eight and nine, would say, no, kill me. But I'm not going to renounce the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. And I'm sure their hearts were singing out and saying, for in him and in him alone is eternal life. And the few things that I may suffer on this earth is, is not worth comparing with the glory that is ahead of me in Christ Jesus. See, eternity is so significant at this hour that one has to ask themselves where I want to spend it. Yes. Where I want to spend it. He says, truly, truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen. But still, you do not accept a testimony. Jesus says, I have spoken to you today, Nicodemus, on earthly things. And you won't believe. How then will you believe if I speak to you on heavenly things? And I think this is beautiful. I love this story. Because there's everything in it. I believe it's one of the greatest stories. Between a man and a God. In the Bible. It's so significant. This is what he says. He says no one. Has ever gone into heaven. Except the one who came. From heaven. The son of man. Jesus Christ. He says just. As Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness. So the son of man must be lifted up. Listen to this. That everybody that believes on him will have eternal life. For he says God so loved the world. That he sent his one and only son. That if you believe in him. You will not perish. But have eternal life. So here we have Jesus revealing his godness. Revealing himself as the one and only begotten son. Revealing himself as God in flesh. And revealing to Nicodemus that he is going to be lifted up for the sins of the world. As I said, Nicodemus would have known the Old Testament. He would have known the Lords of God. He would have been waiting on a saviour. And I'm sure when he's heard he was saying. Well, well this might be him. But I like me. Worldly positions as well. I'm not going to start hanging around with. Jesus and, and all his mates. And his disciples and all of that. Because I don't want to. I don't want other people seeing me. With them, they may think I'm a, I'm a little bit gone out my head. They may think that I've, I've really gone religious bonkers. But listen to this. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But to save the world through him. Save you. Save me. You know, before I got saved, I was four years in the, in the Christian church. And my life before I got saved dictated how I felt about certain stuff. So to me, because I had suffered abuse at the, the hand of Christian brothers when... 
when people talk to me about sin in the Bible and sin that Jesus came to, to save sinners, I used to think, well, man, I'm way too dirty. I'm way too dirty because I've been told that I'm a dirty, filthy sinner. And it's me that's causing people to abuse me. So when people, Christians used to talk about that I'm a sinner and needing a saviour, it used to mean something that was totally different to me. and It used to actually make me feel dirty. And then another thing that used to stop me from, from believing in a sense in the Christian faith was this. It says, for God so loved the world that he sent Jesus Christ into the world. That God so loved me and uh, that he sent his son to die for me. And I could never believe that somebody would love me that much. That he would actually die for me. So that used to stop me. It wasn't the theology about this or that. It was sin. So when people used to say sin, it used to make me feel dirty because I was told as, I was, as I'm being abused that I'm a dirty, filthy sinner. And because of that stuff that happened in my life, I could never re receive love. So I could never even believe that God would love me that much, that he, he would send his, his son, his one and only son, to die. In my place. So I was in the Christian church. For a number of years. Doing as every, everybody. Was doing in a sense. And, and just doing. Other stuff as well. I was living as a. As a rebel. I was taking drugs. But I talked to him. He said well at least I'm, I'm in church. And I'm safe. And I was baptised. It didn't mean anything to me. The minute I got out of the water, I, I ran and I scored drugs. I left everybody else in the church celebrating my baptism. And I went down to a crack house and scored drugs. So it meant nothing to me. And then one night, in the depths of despair, when I was really thinking of, of ending it all, I cried out to Jesus. I said, my life is worthless. I, I just want to die at this point. Yeah. Life's not worth living anymore. I've, I've done so much wrong on others. I, I haven't been a father to my kids or a, a husband to my wife. I've been a very bad son to my mothers and fathers. And my life was wrecked. I was sick from taking drugs all those years. My mind was gone. And I, I said to a friend of mine, I'm just going to end it. And I was in the Christian church. I had been baptised. And I was feeling this way. I had no hope. In my life. And I was in the Christian church. And you know I say to people that. You know my mate didn't listen that night. He told me to shut up. Have me and go to sleep. I just get stoned. But God listened to me that night. That night. And he even broke through me belief systems. He broke through how I would feel about myself concerning this sin that, that I carried and this condemnation and, and this judgment that I carried. He broke through all of that. Just as he did right through with Nicodemus's religious upbringing. And he's turned around and he said to me, just as he did Nicodemus, look at Hammy. I know you got to be about that. Technical. What can I say? I had a supernatural encounter with Jesus Christ. I became born again of his spirit. I instantly came off drugs. I instantly had peace in my mind. And this is a difference between religion and relationship. It says, whoever believes in him 
is not condemned. But whoever does not believe in him is condemned already. Because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is what it says in verse 19. And you know I've been thinking about this again all week with this coronavirus. And uh, you know everybody, everybody you meet at the moment. Everywhere you go we're just, we're living. And like this is not me trying to convert the world. I'm just telling you as I see it. But everywhere we go now at this moment in time, people are just living in a culture of fear. You have to agree with me there. Yeah. People are just wrapped in fear. I was in two houses last week and, and they wouldn't even come out the door. They talked to me through glass. And that was with masks and gloves and, and all of this stuff. So people are riddled with fear. And this is the thing. This is, this is my thinking on this. And this is what it says in, in verse 19. This is the verdict. And I says there's a whole story in this. About the cross of Jesus Christ. About being born again of, of God's spirit. And then he goes on to say this in verse 19. And listen to this. And I believe God has shown himself as a judge. In this. And what's to come. And this is what it says. This is is the verdict light has come into the world but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil it says everybody who comes who does evil hate the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. It's still going. Keep going, honey. James. Okay. See, the thing about it is, is this. Man, the devil is really trying yeah. to shut us down this morning. Yeah. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness. Is this you this morning, brother and sister? Are you fearful of walking into the light? For fear that your evil deeds, the real you is going to be exposed. Look at exposure is good. Exposure is good. God wants to expose the darkness within you. That he may bring his light into your heart. God, want, God wants to make you so born again of his spirit. That you're not, your attitudes, your life will be transformed. You will come into the person that he wants you to be. So exposure is good. Unless our hearts are exposed to sin, we will not see our need for a saviour. We will not see the cross of Jesus Christ. And I tell you today, yeah. there's no bypassing it. There's, the Bible says there's no other name under heaven by, man, by which man can be saved but by the name of Jesus Christ. There's no other name. There's no other name. Truly, truly, I say unto thee, unless you are born again of his spirit, you will not enter eternity. If you are to die today without Jesus Christ in your life, you're going to a lost eternity. This is the verdict. Come out of darkness into his light. Allow him to expose your heart and allow him to give you new life. Amen. Verse 21 says this. Whoever lives by the truth. Are you a person of truth this morning? Whoever lives by the truth comes into the light. So that it may be seen plainly that what they have done, they have done in the sight of God. 
The cross of Jesus Christ Amen. is where we receive forgiveness. When one becomes born again of the spirit of the living God, God changes us. Some it's fast, some it's slow. But change comes. Amen. The things of this world do not attract us. The life that we've lived does not attract us. And I'm saying this with the greatest of respect, even to you, brother, sister, those who have been coming to church but are not walking in the newness of life. You know, before I got saved, before I got saved and I was in church, I couldn't read the Bible. I couldn't read the Word of God. It was foreign to me. I always had it around me like a lucky charm. But it didn't mean anything to me. It says, when I received the Spirit of God, when I became born again of God's Spirit, I couldn't put it down If your Bible, if your word is gathering dust on a shelf, I'm telling you, with the greatest of our love and respect to you today. If you have a Bible, if you are professing Christ Jesus as your Lord and as your Saviour, Saviour, and your Bible is just a dirt collector, dust collector, it's a red flag. It says we, spirit testifies to the spirit. Amen. The word of God is a spiritual book. It feeds, give us this day our daily bread. It's manna from heaven every day. It straightens out the crooked path before us. It gives light unto thy feet that we can walk this walk with all the power that we have within us. The cross of Jesus Christ is where we receive forgiveness. You cannot be born again of the spirit of the living God if you have not received forgiveness. If you have received forgiveness this morning and your life has not changed, it's a red flag. Examine yourself. Make sure you're in the faith. Yes. Don't just presume it because the worship is good in church. They have the lights, they have the camera, they have the action. I'm not wearing skinny jeans anymore, that's for sure. But I'm born again of his spirit. I'm loving Jesus. I know that I'm going to spend eternity with him. Amen. Listen to this. Listen to what it says in 1 John 4. This is profound. It says this. This is how we know that we live in him. And he in us. He has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and we testify that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. It says if anybody acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God. God lives in him and them in he. And so we know and rely on the love that God has for us. Listen to what it says here. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how we this is how love is made complete among us. So that we will have confidence on that day of judgment. Every knee will bow. You will not be able to say on that day I was a Presbyterian. I was a Baptist. I was a Muslim. I was a Catholic. God will simply ask you. Have you got my spirit? Are you born again? When did your conversion take place? When did you receive me into your life as your Lord and as your Saviour? 
When did your life radically change and be transformed into my likeness? When was the, the day that you decided in your heart that I'm following Jesus with all my heart, with all my strength, with all my mind? I'm following him regardless how my feelings dictate. I'm following him regardless of how my belief system is or my life dictates. I'm following him for in him and in him alone is eternal life. Amen. Listen to what it says here. There is no fear in love. Folks, you're out there this morning, you're living in fear like the whole world. I'm here with a good news message this morning to you. You can have that fear eradicated out of your life today by the perfect, beautiful love of Jesus Christ. I don't want you to come to my church. I want to introduce you today to Jesus Christ, the author and the perfecter of your faith, the God who has a plan and a purpose for your life. He's not asking you to, to sort out the nitty gritty. He's not asking you to be a great world philosopher, try to understand the depths of nature and creation. He's simply asking you today, submit, surrender, come to me. Repent, ask of me, and I will answer you. Hallelujah. It says perfect love drives out all fear because fear has to, do, has to do with punishment. It says the one who fears is not made perfect in God's love. Are you wrapped with fear today? You're full of fear today. I ask you today, if God has been speaking to you, as I said, I, he, he's not asking you to try to understand the, the ways of this world and creation. He's simply asking you today to put your faith in his son, Jesus Christ, for God so loved you that he sent his one and only begotten son, that if you believe in him, you will not perish, but have eternal life. Look, I want you, God wants you, Jesus wants you to be in, in eternity. Yeah. He wants you to be living a life that's full of love yeah. and not full of fear. So I'm giving you the call today. And I'm asking you in the name of Jesus Christ, are you ready? Are you ready to come out of darkness into his wonderful light? Are you ready to come out of fear into his wonderful love? Amen. You know, the fear of death. I was talking a few weeks ago to somebody that I really love. They've lived a life that's 75 years of age. And he said to me, one thing haunts me. Death. Death. Where do we go? What comes after this? 75 years of age and they're crippled with that. And you know, I said to that person, there's no fear in death because love has cast out all fear. Jesus paid the price for Amen. you and for me. Not because of good works, not because of good deeds, nothing I can do. Nothing I can do in this world can make God turn and give me salvation. It's based on this and this alone, the cross of his one and only begotten son. Amen. That you and I that look to him will not perish, but have eternal life. So I'm going to pray this prayer with you and I'm asking you to pray it out with me. Be bold, be strong because the Lord your God is with you. This is your day of salvation. It's not my day. I'm saved already. I'm born again of his spirit. I know God changed me. Amen. But it's your day. And as we pray this prayer, just bury our heads. And just pray along with me. Be bold. Be courageous this day. 
and allow the living God to flood your life with so much of his love that you will be changed, that you'll be dancing on your feet. Amen. Amen. So please repeat after me. It's a simple prayer of faith. God is listening. And the heavens at the moment is quiet. And God is waiting on your reply this morning to the message that has been spoken here. So with me, please repeat. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I just come before you today. I just come before you today. I've been listening. I've been listening. To what you are saying. To what you are saying. I ask you Jesus. I ask you Jesus. To come into my heart. To come into my heart. I believe now. I believe now. That you are the son of God. That you are the son of God. I ask you Jesus. I ask you Jesus. To make me born again. To make me born again. Of your spirit. Of your spirit. I ask you Jesus. I ask you Jesus. To cast out all my fear. To cast out all my fear. All my anxiety. All my anxiety. All my pain. All my pain. I ask you Jesus. I ask you Jesus to come into my life. To come into my life. To be my Lord. To be my Lord. And to be my Savior. And to be my Savior. I thank you, Father God. I thank you, Father God. That you are merciful. That you are merciful to someone. To someone as me. Like me. I receive you now. I receive you now. As my Lord. As my Lord. And as my Saviour. As my Saviour. From this day. From this day. And into eternity. And into eternity. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, if you've said that prayer, and I believe many of you have today, you are now born again of his spirit. And the spirit of the living God has come into your heart. And as the week goes on, you are going to see change coming. I encourage you now even pick up the Bible. Read John's Gospel. Read what God wants to speak into your heart today. And you know, give, send us a, a tag or a, a message. Let us know if you want us to stand with you. If you're struggling today, even with mental health, if you're struggling with addiction, if you're struggling with abuse, you know, I've shared a, a bit of my story about abuse and how I overcame that. And if you are struggling with issues of abuse, you're not on your own. Thousands upon thousands of men and women and children in this country and around the world have been abused. But you notice healing in this. And the only healer that can heal your brokenness is Jesus Christ. I'm telling you this not because I've read it in a book. But that I experienced his healing hand yes. on my life. So be blessed and, and send us a message. And have a great week in Jesus name. Amen. Amen.